Every little girl and boy has the Marvel Cinematic Release Day calendar pinned on the wall above their bed. They look at it every night, counting the minutes until the release of the next superhero flick that they love so dearly. Sadly, little Sally had her take one of those movies off the calendar, and she doesn't know why. Why would Marvel and Disney take away a superhero movie from little Sally? Well, that's why I'm here. In recent news, the previously announced Inhumans movie has been removed from Marvel's calendar. Let's do some investigating and figure out what the heck happened. Actually, first, let's figure out who these Inhumans are. The Inhumans are a group of half-humans, half-aliens, more specifically, Kree, the ones he saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, that have been secretly living on Earth for thousands slash millions of years, depending on who you ask. In prehistoric times, out in the vast emptiness of space, two mighty empires were at war. The Kree on one side and the Skrulls on the other. The Kree found primitive life on Earth and made the devious decision to experiment on the young life forms in hopes of creating a powerful mutant army. Well, kudos to the Kree because it worked. They created mutant humans, or inhumans, not the mutants from the X-Men, that were unbelievably powerful. However, the Kree abandoned the base on Earth after a prophecy stated that the inhumans would overthrow the Kree or something, just uh, we don't have time for comic book garbly gook. Some Inhumans banded together and created hidden cities around the world, while others mated with regular Homo sapiens at the time and the Inhuman gene became dormant. But with regular humans nowadays, the gene can be activated through a process called pterogenesis. Mm. Throw the word genesis at the end of anything, and I am pleasantly titillated. Basically, the proto-inhumans get exposed to some Cree space rock dust, pterogen mist, and poof, they become their true form. Well, not so much poof. Uh, they get this cocoon that forms around them really violently and their bodies painfully morph into their true selves. <laughs> Neat. Some Inhumans are luckier than others with this whole Terragenesis game. Some end up looking like freaking supermodels with uh, extraordinary abilities, while others look like literal monsters. As a way to prevent this, the Inhumans themselves screen their own kind before ever considering the process. Usually Terragenesis is something that an Inhuman has to earn, but sometimes that doesn't always work out, kind of like in the Infinity storyline where Thanos and Black Bolt accidentally dropped a Terrigen bomb and spread the tea mist all over the Earth. That's a hoops moment. The most famous of the Inhumans have to be Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, a shapeshifter, not Captain Marvel, even though she is half human and half Kree. Uh, don't ask. Ooh, uh, then we got Quake, who most of you know from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., who possesses seismic abilities, real cool. And then the Inhuman royal family, which includes Black Bolt, King of the Inhumans with a hypersonic voice, uh, Medusa, Queen of the Inhumans with a crazy controlling hair, and Lockjaw, that dog that can teleport. They most famously lived on the floating city of Adelan and made their official debut in Marvel Comics in Fantastic Four number 45 in December 1965. Anyways, all that garbage out of the way, now it's time to figure out why the Inhumans movie is currently on hold. Or worse, there's a sound effect there. Well, a few speculations. One, the previously mentioned MCU schedule that Marvel released has changed quite a bit. Movie release dates have been switched around, things have been pushed back, and the biggest problem childs have to be the addition of Spider-Man Homecoming and Ant-Man and the Wasp. While I am excited for a third freaking attempt at Spider-Man and more Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly, I'm usually always more excited for new heroes taking center stage. Two, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has more or less, <laughs> Asians of S.H.I.E.L.D. <sighs> Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has more or less become an Inhumans TV show, which isn't a bad thing, but it would have or will make it difficult for a film writer to reintroduce the Inhumans to a wider audience when they already exist on a slightly smaller screen. But if they did reintroduce the Inhumans in a film, do they acknowledge the TV show? Does this mean that everybody who watches the film would have to go watch the show? Who knows? And three, office drama over at Marvel. Again, speculations, but recently there's been a shakeup over at Marvel with Kevin Feige now directly answering to Disney while the reclusive head of Marvel, Ike Perlmutter, now mainly controls the TV branch of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, etc. I'm gonna pretend that I said that right. I'm just gonna keep going. As you can probably tell from my tone, Kevin and Ike probably don't get along too well, or really Ike and everybody else at Marvel. Again, Speculations, I'm covering my ass. Uh, but back to it. Ike has a special place in his heart for the Inhumans because in a way, they could be the MCU's answer to mutants since the X-Men are locked up over at Fox. However, Inhumans have never been particularly popular and really never been bestsellers minus a few runs in the comics. So now Kevin is sidelining our alien friends for the time being. Whatever the reason is, this doesn't mean that it's officially dead, but imagine all of this being introduced in a movie. Does it seem daunting or overly complicated? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do I think it's gonna happen? Yeah, I'll stay positive. They gotta fill up phase four with something, right? If you're sad about the Inhumans movie possibly not happening, just watch season two and three of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's been amazing recently. Eh, but that's it from me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out all the other 101 videos that we have to offer. I'm Sam Basher, and I'll see you next time. Speaking of optimism, try to hold on to it as we dive into the early reviews of X-Men Apocalypse. The reviews are, at best, described as mixed.